Welcome to PFT Tutor with Jeffrey Haynes. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. It's greatly appreciated. In this video, we're going to discuss how to perform a DLCO simulation with a 3 liter calibration syringe in accordance with the 2017 ERS ATS standards. Traditionally, DLCO simulation was performed with an expensive Hans Rudolph double syringe device that required expensive tanks of precision gas. In addition, performing a DLCO simulation with this device isn't simple, it requires a fair amount of expertise. Uh, these devices are still in use, but usually as part of a detailed QC program that's required of research studies. However, the 2017 ERS ATS DLCO technical standards recommended a more simple and inexpensive method using a standard 3 liter calibration syringe. It is recommended that DLCO simulation should be performed weekly and as needed when a technical problem is suspected. Performing a DLCO simulation is still somewhat confusing for many technologists, so I'm going to show you how easy and simple it really is. As you can see here, the very sophisticated Hans Rudolph DLCO simulator makes a nice stand for my 3 liter syringe. Now there are some manufacturers who have a DLCO simulation mode in their software, and there's nothing wrong with that, but the ERS ATS standards recommend performing DLCO simulation in patient testing mode. So I'm going to show you how to perform DLCO simulation using that methodology. The first thing you'll need to do is create a fake simulation patient, which you can name DLCO Sim or whatever you'd like to name it. The age, height, and other demographics don't matter. Enter whatever you'd like. Our laboratory follows technologists' performance in our software, specifically the percentage of tests that satisfy ATS ERS quality standards, and we don't want those data affected by BioQC or DLCO simulation testing, so I created a fictitious technologist, which I call BioQC. In my laboratory, we have three systems, so we had to create three different simulation patients, one for each machine. So we can just call them DLCO Sim 1, DLCO Sim 2, and DLCO uh, Sim 3. I use one dedicated 3 liter syringe to perform DLCO simulation on all three of our systems to minimize the effect of differences in the syringes. I'm not sure if that's absolutely necessary. It's just the way that I do it. Uh, obviously, if you only have one PFT system, this won't be a problem for you. Ideally, the syringe used for DLCO simulation will not have a hose or a filter attached because that will add dead space and you'll need to account for that amount of dead space. Because you are performing DLCO simulation in a patient testing mode, most of the software on the market is going to require you to perform a vital capacity first so the acceptability of the inspired volume can be judged. During DLCO, patients should inhale at least 90% or greater of their largest vital capacity. You can do this as a force vital capacity or a slow vital capacity. I do it as a slow vital capacity, but it doesn't really matter which one you do. When you do this, you'll notice that the vital capacity will be higher than 3 liters, and it should be about 3.3 .3 liters. The vital capacity will be 3.3 because this is being performed in patient testing mode, and in patient testing mode, the measured volumes are multiplied by the BTPS correction factor, which is generally around 1.1. As you can see above, the 3 liter simulated vital capacity is reported at 3.3 liters. Remember that the spirometer malfunction may also affect DLCO. So if the simulated vital capacity and the recorded value is not close to 3.3, you may have found the problem without even doing the DLCO simulation. After recording the simulated vital capacity, perform a DLCO test exactly how you would do it with a patient, making sure that when you draw the DLCO gas into the syringe, you do so with a full stroke of the syringe, starting with an empty syringe and pulling it back to a full syringe. You will need to evaluate both the simulated DLCO and the simulated alveolar volume, or VA. As you can see in this simulation test, there is a DLCO of 0.17 mLs per minute per millimeter mercury and a VA of 3.45 liters. So how do you know if your results are acceptable? The 2017 ERS ATS DLCO standards say that the simulated DLCO should be less than 0.5 mLs per minute per millimeter of mercury and the simulated alveolar volume should be 3 liters plus or minus 300 mLs under BTPS conditions. 
Going back to our simulation example, you can see that the simulated DLCO is acceptable, but the simulated alveolar volume of 3.45 liters is outside of the acceptable range of 3 liters plus or minus 300 ml. So what's going on here? You're going to run into this problem because there is an error in the ERS ATS standards. To achieve a simulated alveolar volume of 3 liters plus or minus 3 ml with a 3 liter syringe, the data will be need to be reported under ambient temperature, pressure, and dry conditions, or ATPD. Remember, the gas that you're using is out of a tank, so it's completely dry. The ballpark rule of thumb conversion factor from BTPS to ATPD is 0.91. So take the alveolar uh, volume that you've recorded and multiply it by 0.91. As you can see, multiplying the alveolar volume of 3.45 liters at BTPS by 0.91 lowers the alveolar volume to 3.14 liters. Now it is within the acceptable 3 liters plus or minus 300 ml range. However, it's still not really close to 3 liters. Remember that even though we are performing this simulation without a hose or a filter attached to the syringe, there is still some dead space in the syringe that needs to be accounted for. And for this syringe, the dead space is 100 mLs. So if we go back and subtract an additional 100 mLs for the syringe dead space, the simulated VA is now 3.04, very close to the 3 liter target. I plot the DLCO simulation data in a Levy Jennings plot like you'd use for blood gas quality control data. As you can see, I also set a three standard deviation limit, which tends to be tighter than the ERS ATS uh, limits. I use my statistical software to make these graphs, but I'm sure there are plenty of videos on YouTube showing how you can do this in Excel. You can also do this for free on the WestGuard uh, website. Uh, go onto the website and click on tools and you should see the tool there. I'll place the link uh, for this site in the description. I also plot the simulated alveolar volume in a Levy Jennings plot. And as you can see, adding a three standard deviation range is much tighter, in my opinion, better uh, way to set the simulation limits. So as you can see here, here are the ERS ATS limits here. But when I use three standard deviations, it's much tighter. We had this case report published in the European Respiratory Journal supporting the idea that a three standard deviation range may be better than the arbitrary ERS ATS limits. As you can see, there were three measurements that were much higher than usual, shown right here. The data were around six standard deviations outside of the usual values, but they were still within the ERS ATS limits. So a leak was suspected in the DLCO collection bag, and when the bag was replaced, the simulated alveolar volume went within the three standard deviation range. This is an important point, because if you only went by the ERS ATS ranges alone, you would possibly conclude that everything is fine and you should continue to use this device for patient testing. Clearly it's not fine, that's why I would advocate using a three standard deviation range. Key points, DLCO simulation can be easily performed with a 3 liter calibration syringe. DLCO simulation should be done weekly and as needed if a malfunction is suspected. It is recommended that DLCO simulation testing be done in patient testing mode. Simulated DLCO should be less than 0.5 ml per minute per millimeter of mercury. The simulated VA should be 3 liters plus or minus 300 mLs, remember, under ATPD conditions, not BTPS. And as I've shown you, using a 3 standard deviation range may be more appropriate than the ERS ATS ranges. Thank you for watching PFT Tutor with Jeffrey Haynes. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification buttons, and we'll see you next time.